the axioms of a group are picked for their conciseness and simplicity. Many other important properties follow almost immediately from these axioms, uh, but, not, but are not included in the axioms. So our first step is to prove some of these basic properties. For instance, in the definition of a group, we are guaranteed the existence of an identity element, but we're not told whether this element is unique or not. There could be two or three or infinitely many different identity elements. So our first lemma is the assertion that, in fact, there is a unique, a single identity element. So to prove this, let's pick two elements in the group and suppose that they satisfy the defining properties of an identity element, and then we'll show that they have to be equal. So let's let E and F be two identity elements. In other words, for all G and G, E G equals G and G equals G. And similarly for F. Now, these are universal statements, so we're allowed to pick G to be any element of the group. So for the second property, uh, sorry, for the first property on the first line, let's pick G to be F. That yields E F equals F. Similarly, for the second property on the second line, let's pick G equal to E, and that tells us that EF is equal to E. Putting these together yields that E is equal to EF, and that EF is equal to F. So that tells us that E is equal to F as required. So any two elements of a group that satisfy the axioms of an identity element have to be equal. Similarly, the axioms apply that there exists an inverse of any element in a group, but they don't imply the uniqueness of this inverse. However, we can quickly show that the inverse of an element is unique. Let's pick an element G and G, and let H and K be two inverses of G. So that tells us that GH equals E and HG equals E, and similarly for K. Now, doing some simple manipulation with this tells us that K is equal to K times E. E is equal to GH, so that's equal to K times GH. Using associativity, that's KG times H. And then by the second property here, that's E times H, which is H. So we've proved that K is equal to H as required. So the inverse of an element is unique. So we can denote this element by the inverse of an element by g to the power minus 1. Let's look at some of the elementary properties of the inverse now. First of all, the inverse of the inverse is the original element. g inverse inverse is equal to g. So from the definition of the inverse, we have that g, g inverse is equal to e, and g inverse g is equal to e. Let's write these in the opposite order, these two statements in the opposite order. We get g inverse g is equal to e, and g times g inverse is equal to e. Well, that's exactly the statement that g is the inverse of g inverse. In other words, in our new notation, g is equal to the inverse of g inverse. Secondly, let's look at the inverse of a product. The inverse of hg is the inverse of a product is the product of the inverses written in the opposite order. To prove this, we just have to show that G inverse H inverse behaves as the inverse of HG. In other words, when we do the multiplications, we get the appropriate number. So let's do this multiplication. We take HG and multiply it by G inverse H inverse. By our generalized associativity, we can rewrite this in any order we want. So we write it in the order shown here. The G and G inverse then collapse to E, H E collapses to H, and H and H inverse collapse down to E. So we get that H G times G inverse H inverse is equal to E. And we can do the similar thing on the other side. So the G inverse H inverse times H G is also equal to E. So that tells us that G inverse H inverse is the inverse of H G. Finally, let's notice the cancellation law. If we have three elements, A, B, C, and G, and A, B is equal to A, C, then B is equal to C. 
and an analogous statement for cancellation on the right. Well, this is straightforward. We just write AB equals AC, multiply both signs by the inverse of A, use associativity to write that as A inverse A times B equals A inverse A times C, and cancel that down to EB equals EC or B equals C. So that shows us that we have left cancellation and the similar argument gives us right cancellation.